Lewis Orford is set to sign a new West Ham contract in one of the biggest U-turns we've seen in a very long time. And here is everything that we know so far. <laughs> West Ham Network, it's Holly. I hope you're all well. And in recent days, what we're going to be chatting about today, we've seen a gigantic U-turn in Lewis Orford's future as the academy midfielder and lifelong West Ham fan, just to add that in, is set now to agree a new five-year deal with the club, which is very exciting and also very much deserved. You can tell how much he loves the club. He's an under-18 England player. He's played in a lot of pre-season and he has impressed when he's been given the opportunity, which now sets him up for the challenge to find his place in the squad and hopefully secure himself one day in our starting 11. So as a centre mid, he plays in a position where we don't really have someone that solidified their spot alongside Alvarez since Rice's departure. And instead, we've chopped and changed with Ward Prowse and a few others in there. But just days ago, hence the U-turn, the 18-year-old had got wrapped up in the John Duran negotiations, which frustrated a lot of fans. So Fabrizio announced that he was being offered up as part of the Duran deal, which made it feel like despite him saying that all he wanted to do was play for West Ham and all he like cared about was playing for West Ham was that he was kind of being used as a bit of a pawn in a transaction negotiation for a player that apparently doesn't have the best attitude. So obviously it didn't come across particularly well and it did upset a lot of fans because all we want is to be able to grow homegrown talent and then see them succeed. It's also very difficult because... I know as a fan, I really want all of the, the academy players to get the opportunity, but I also regularly want us to bring in signings that will then play ahead of them. So it is very difficult, but it feels like hopefully we are finding ways to have pathways for academy players to get opportunities and to be given the opportunity at least to show what they can do and play for the first team. And what better player than Lewis Orford? But the strangest thing about this U-turn is that not much could have really changed in such a short period of time, apart from the fan uproar about hearing that he was going to be potentially sold as part of the deal. But Mark Noble is now said to have been heavily involved in talks to get him this contract. So Noble could have played a very key role in reminding people of the importance of offering bright futures to our talented academy players. Because if all you're going to do is I suppose similar to what Brighton do, where they bring players in, they get them to a level and then they get rid. I know it's not academy that we're talking about here it kind of kills the soul of what you're trying to do in terms of a project. And something that we've always prided ourselves on at West Ham is our academy and giving people opportunities. So we've got to, we've got to stick by the words that we say, otherwise it doesn't really make any sense. So we're yet to see whether Orford is going to be good enough to eventually regularly become a starting 11 kind of player for West Ham or a squad player. But we do clearly think that he's talented enough and does have promise of the level that we need. Otherwise, we wouldn't have rejected Villa's initial bid for him. And this is why we then went back in offering him as part of the deal because we knew that they were keen to sign him initially. But Villa fans at the time thought that we were overvaluing Orford alongside the cash part of the deal. Um, so they thought that we were kind of taking the mickey there. But I, for one, am really, really happy for him. And a five-year deal is a proper statement of intent, which also sends a message out to academy players that opportunities are there. And if you work hard and stick by the club, that you can get really long-term deals that will benefit you. Um, as well as showing that he is actually a valuable player to us. You could see it by, I suppose, what we were valuing him as, as part of the John Duran deal. Um, but maybe Villa will realise that they've missed out and it will be far too late by then. So the future definitely looks bright for Orford, who's still got plenty of time to keep developing. He's 18 years old and it's being reported originally by ex-West Ham employee that there has now been a clear pathway laid out of the plan to develop him and what his pathways would be to the first team. And in my opinion, this is one of the things that we've definitely needed to work on. And I think it's something that a lot of Premier League teams struggle with because you've got the, the level of Premier League players and obviously you want to be ambitious and sign better and bring better players into the team. But then you're going to have to give these players an opportunity to actually show what they can do, whether they are capable of playing at this level. And if you don't, you get rid of them. And it's a massive waste of time having the academy because essentially you just use it like Man City do as a bit of a money making opportunity because... They develop people and then sell them off to other clubs rather than regularly letting them go into the first team. So I think this is what we need to actually be able to understand what 
the the way that they get into the first team is um and you've got to give opportunities because you can't say that we'll give people opportunities when we're in positions where it doesn't matter if we lose a game and things like that because realistically it always matters if we lose a game whether we're fighting relegation whether we're wanting to be mid-table whether we've got the opportunity for european spots every single point counts and you can't say halfway through the season we're doing okay if we drop a few points it doesn't matter let's bring some of the academy players in because ultimately three points one point could cost cost you something like European football, could cost you a couple of Premier League spots. And I'm going off on a massive tangent here. But what I'm saying is there's got to be opportunities that are giving players the chance and that are understanding that there is obviously risk with bringing in an academy player, as there is with any new player that isn't proven in the Premier League or whatever. But I'm just excited to hear that it sounds like we're coming up with actual pathways and we have plans for how we are going to integrate these players into our first team because that is how you get players that are confident, that are going to stick by the club, that feel ambitious and feel valued at the club rather than just feeling like the academy is very separate to the first team because that's not what we want at West Ham. We want a big feeder system. So, yeah, a big part of keeping the gates open between the academy and the first team is going to be Noble as sporting director. So it's very good to hear that he did play a big role in making sure that Orford's future was looked after, even if it was after he was offered up to Villa. But drop us a comment with how you think, well, how are you feeling about this, but also what you think the future could hold for Lewis Orford. And give this video a thumbs up if you're glad that he got that long-term deal, because I definitely am. I don't think... There's anything better than West Ham fans getting to this point in their football career at the club and getting opportunities to actually show what they can do. There aren't many Mark Nobles in the world, but I'm sure Orford looks up to Noble as an example of how you can make it to the first team through hard work and then commit your future to the club that you love. So maybe one day if we can keep our academy going and we can keep developing and giving opportunities for these youngsters, we could see more Mark Nobles and do something a bit differently to other clubs where, like we say, players don't stay at a club for more than a couple of seasons quite a lot of the time now. But I think if you genuinely build up relationships with players from the beginning of their, their football careers, you give them the opportunities, you treat them how they deserve to be treated, there's no reason you can't have more Mark Nobles in the world. So happy days. Congratulations to Orford. He's definitely one that I'm really, really excited to keep an eye on in the coming season, seasons as well. Um, and that is all from me for now. But tune in at 5pm where I'm going to be running through your Hammers headlines for today. Have a great day. Enjoy that sunshine. And until next time, congratulations to Orford. Come on, you irons.